Once you have searched for Git and you've downloaded Git onto your computer, you will then want to create a GitHub account, which is essentially where everything is stored outside of your own system. And I recommend downloading GitHub Desktop because it saves going into the terminal and doing all that sort of like scary Cody stuff. You just push buttons instead. To use Git in Obsidian, obviously you need a vault, so I'm going to create a new vault, but if this is the vault that you're currently working with, then you'll want to install the plugin inside of your vault. I'm creating a new vault in my E drive. I'm going to go to Settings, Community Plugins, Turn on Community Plugins if you haven't got it turned on already, Browse, search for Obsidian Git, install enable then when i go to the options it gives me the options but you can see git is not ready in this vault because i need a git history folder for this vault before obsidian git can do anything so at the moment in my folder system i have a new vault when i click in it i have a dot obsidian folder which makes it an obsidian vault i click in i have the plugins there is the obsidian git plugin but there's no dot git folder yet now, when you first load up GitHub Desktop, it will take you through a help tutorial. Now, I'm not going to go through the help tutorial because it literally just tells you what buttons to push. But to add a .git folder in our vault, we need to go to File, New Repository. Now, because of the way the GitHub Desktop works, this new repository is going to be the folder that you could use as your Obsidian Vault. And what that means is if you've already got your vault and you're doing the Git repository like this, you'll need to move the .git afterwards which i'll show you in a second i'm going to create a repository called repository inside of the new vault that i've just made so this is the local vault folder that i have i don't want to read me because it's just going to be a .git folder create repository now when i go into my documents you can see there's the new vault folder and there's the repository folder or directory that the github desktop has just created and inside there is the dot git attributes and the dot git folder that we actually need for the history dot git folders are hidden so if you're on windows you can go to view and then tick the hidden items box and then it will actually show the folder if you're on mac i'm not sure i'll probably put a hotkey or something on screen but in this case at the moment i have a folder inside of a folder but i don't want repository to be my obsidian vault folder because it's not so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to cut so Control x on my keyboard go back to my main vault so this is the new vault and then paste the dot git in there i can then delete that repository folder because it's not doing anything so now when i go into that vault you can see the dot obsidian folder and the dot git folder aren't here if i was to add a folder into the obsidian vault then it would show up in obsidian here as you can see new folder and it will also show up in the vault details inside of documents just like every other file and folder does for obsidian but the dot git and dot obsidian are hidden from the obsidian view going back to github desktop it's going to say well it can't find the repository because it was in the repository folder so we can locate it so refine the folder well there's the dot git and we just want the vault because that's where it currently is stored so the dot git is in the new vault directory or folder so select folder once it's new vault and now when i look at the top of the screen the current repository is the new vault repository because it's got the dot git folder in i mean the main branch no need to worry about that unless you're planning on using git in which case I'm not sure why you're watching this video and then a publish to repository button but before we publish the repository to github at the moment the git history doesn't have any sort of instance that there's no history to really have because we haven't pushed or committed saved anything yet so i'm going to go into the summary go commit commit to main so now when we go to history we'll see the initial commit of when we created the dot git folder in the repository and then we have the second commit which was just changing all of the different settings in the obsidian vault i don't think you have to do this commit to push things to the github repository the remote repository but i do it to make sure that nothing gets messed up or confused now I'm going to publish the repository. I'm going to keep the name as new vault. I'm not going to add a description and I want to keep this private because I don't want other people to be able to go into my GitHub account and then see my notes. So publish repository. Then when you go to GitHub, if it doesn't sign you in at this page, you what I tend to do is just go to the top left, see what's going on, <laughs> click on the first repository, then click on my name. There's probably an easy way to do it, but that's how I get back there. Then I click on repositories and you can see now we have the new vault, the new vault that I've literally just made. And this is the GitHub repository. So the remote version of my vault. 
There's the dot obsidian folder, there's the dot attributes folder, and now when we go back to obsidian, that message at the top should have disappeared. If it didn't disappear, then it needs to be updated, so you can go to the community plugins, turn it off, turn it back on, then when you go to obsidian git, that message should have gone if the dot git folder is working properly. So for clarity, your main vault folder is there, so you have new vault, click in there, you should have a dot git, dot obsidian, and then anything else that's in your vault. There are quite a few settings inside the Obsidian Git option menu, and for those of you familiar with Git, you can play around in here, but for me, all you really need to do is turn on the push feature, which is the first box, or the, the second setting in the automatic settings section, and what this does is it commits and pushes any change that you make in whatever time interval you put in. So if you put in 10, for example, every 10 minutes you'll see an automatic backup enabled every 10 minutes, so every 10 minutes, if there is a change made, it will push it to the local version, the GitHub desktop, and the remote version, the GitHub online version. If you want to double check the GitHub account it's using is the one that you've actually signed up with, you can go to the bottom and check that the settings are being committed by the right person, i.e. you. But now when we go into Obsidian, we can go to the command palette, for me that's control P as the automatic shortcut that's been put in, or you can go to the left menu, have a look down, and then you should see open command palette. And you get lots of different Obsidian Git commands, and the one that we're looking for is open source control view. Now when we go to the right sidebar, there will be a Git control view. So you've got the source controls right here. Now I've moved my face down a little bit, you'll see we've got the commit, stage all, unstage, push, pull, change layout, and then all of the different changes that's been made. Now if I go into the new folder and I create a new note, say, Test note. You'll see in this source control under changes, there's now been a change to the workspace JSON, which is one of the background files of Obsidian. And the test note has also been changed. In this case, it was actually created, not just changed. You can either wait 10 minutes for Obsidian Git to automatically commit and push those changes, or you can commit it by hand. You can manually push the commits button. But before you can do that, you need to stage everything. And staging basically puts things in a waiting area to be committed. So yes i'm ready to commit this so we're going to stage it so i'm going to push plus and then plus so i've staged both of these changes i'm now going to push the tick for commit but that commit is a local commit now when we go into the new vault repository inside of the github desktop you can see there's no changes because we've just committed them but in here it says well we've made a commit you need to push them so you can either push them from the github desktop or manually from obsidian or obsidian does it automatically. So push to origin. Now when I go to GitHub, you can see we have the new folder. And if I access the new folder, there's the test note. And you can see we've got vault, backup, the date, and then the time, because that is what we have set in the Obsidian plugin. If you look down to the bottom right in the status bar, there is Git notifications in there. So you can see last commit was five minutes ago, and that's the branch it was going to. But on the day-to-day -day basis, I don't push any of those buttons. I don't look at the status bar. I don't look at the GitHub desktop app either. All I do is make sure that this is at 10 minutes, and every 10 minutes or so, I get a notification saying, hey, so and so many changes were pushed to your GitHub. And that is why when you look at my GitHub account, I have loads of commits. It's not because I'm doing loads of coding. It's because Obsidian is pushing, backing up my vault to GitHub. GitHub. So when I go into my Vaultcraft repository, which is a private repository, so you can't see this, but this is my entire vault. You see that's when the last backup was, and I can go and see all of the different things that happened. I've actually recently just done a test just to make sure that I know what I'm doing <laughs> before I do the tutorial. And because we're using Git, it has a record of all of the history of changes. So if I was to go and click on this commit, it's going to show me what I changed. So you can see I completed that task, and I completed that task, and that's literally the entire commit history of this commit. And when you go searching around, you can look at the history of any files. So I'm just going to pick a random note from my notes folder. Uh, let's pick this one. I don't know when. Yeah, this was probably the first commit. But you can click on the history button and then you can see all of the different commits that you've made. Now, because I made this note before my uh, start of use in Obsidian, there's only one commit, which is just the first commit. If I go to the 216 commits that I've currently made in this vault, you can see all of the different commits that has happened, all of the different saves that's happened ever since I started Started using Obsidian Git and I can go back and see all the different changes I've made. So if I click on a random commit from, I don't know, this time, you can see this is what I've added, that's what was removed, that's from the workspace JSON by the look of it, then we've got the uh, a journal note, so I added this, I added some other notes in there, and then all of these things, so I can see exactly what I've done. 
This video is included in my workflow course, link in description that covers more than just the basics of Obsidian, goes into some of the intermediate plugin uses and some of the experienced workflow changes that I have with Zotero, Morgan, and other plugins inside of Obsidian. So if you're interested to learn a little bit more about how I work, subscribe to the YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any of those videos, but also consider having a look at the course because I've got much more information in there that gives a little bit more nuanced information.